Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Sphinx's Tutelage deck. So it's a deck built around the card Sphinx's Tutelage, which tries to mill the opponent out, which is put all their cards from their library into their graveyard, so when they can't draw any more cards because their library is gone, we win the game. So Sphinx's Tutelage mills the opponent for a certain amount whenever we draw a card, so the deck has a bunch of card draw to enable the Sphinx's Tutelage, and then in a late game for 6 mana we can also enable it ourselves to uh, draw a card and then discard to then mill the opponent for a bunch. So the idea of the deck is to get a Sphinx's Tutelage out, preferably on turn 3, and then start drawing cards, prevent the opponent from killing you, and then uh, slowly win the game. So let's get started here with our 1-drops. We have 3 copies of Fog. For a single green at instant speed, we can prevent all combat damage that is dealt this turn. So this is a card we want to use in the late game. Once the opponent has built out a board, we can just use Fog to buy an extra turn because we won't be dealt any combat damage, and then hopefully this buys us enough time to mill out the opponent when we have an active Sphinx's Tutelage going. Then we have a copy of Jay's Friends Prodigy, which is excellent in the deck since we can draw and discard, which then enables the Sphinx's Tutelage if we have one in play, and then he can also start flashing back card draw spells to mill the opponents even more. Then we have 4 copies of Elvish Visionary, which is also great in the deck. For 2 mana we get a 1-1 one, one body that can block a creature and buy us some time, and also draws us a card, so triggers the Sphinx's Tutelage. 4 copies of Alchemist's File, very similar to the Elvish Visionary, but instead of blocking, we can sacrifice the Vial to prevent a creature from attacking or blocking a turn usually prevent a creature from attacking when they have a very large creature out and it's also an artifact which is relevant for some of the cards that are also in the deck so a very great card in this deck we've got two copies of tightening coils basically a two mana removal spell gives a creature minus six minus oh and that creature loses flying so we want to use this on a large creature so we don't take too much damage it's also an enchantment, so might tempt the opponent into destroying this enchantment with enchantment removal instead of our Sphinx's Tutelage, which is always nice, because if they can destroy the Sphinx's Tutelage, we are in a bit of trouble. We've got two copies of Telling Time, just as an additional way to look for the Sphinx's Tutelage. Does not actually draw us cards, just puts them in our hand, so will not trigger the Sphinx's Tutelage, which is why I'll only have two copies instead of the full three, because it doesn't really synergize with Tutelage, but it can help us find the missing pieces. Two copies of Disperse are also great, very versatile card that can bounce opposing non-land permanents, but we can also bounce our own Sphinx's Tutelage, for example, if an opponent tries to destroy it. So a very versatile card, and I like having two copies. Also one copy of Displacement Wave, which is our sweeper in the deck, can return a lot of permanents to their owner's hand. Preferably we would want to use this for one or two, so that we don't have to return our Sphinx's Tutelage to our hand. So this is very efficient against tokens, because for X is zero, you can return all tokens and basically destroy them. But you can also use this for more if you really have to. can also return our own Elvish Visionaries and Alchemist Files, which can then draw us into even more cards. We've got one copy of Anissa Vastwood Seer, which is just a good value card in this deck. Also doesn't really draw cards with the plus one, but can just help us find more fogs, for example, or more card draw if we need that, because this deck is going to go pretty late and we will have seven or more lands to transform the Nissa most of the time. And in the early game, we can always block with Nissa if we have to. Then of course the Sphinx's Tutelage, which we actively want in our opening hand. So if we have an opening hand of 7, since we do get a free mulligan in Magic Duels, it's usually worth it to mulligan a hand to go back to 7 and hopefully have a Sphinx's Tutelage in hand. Maybe even go down to 6, but at that point if your hand is good without a Tutelage you can still keep it. But of course having the Tutelage on turn 3 makes your win percentage a lot better. Two copies of Scatter to the Winds to counter whatever the opponent is doing. Instant speed, so we have a lot of other instants in the deck. 
to go with the scatter so that we can do something else if the opponent doesn't play anything worth countering and mostly to protect our Sphinx's tutelage but also to counter some uh, large threats that the opponent might play. Speaking of instants, we've got four copies of Artificer's Epiphany, which is the card draw spell of choice. For just three mana we get to draw two cards and discard a card, unless we control an artifact, which we do have the Alchemist's Files, so that we don't have to discard. But even if we do have to discard, just drawing two and discarding is a way to trigger the Sphinx's Tulage twice, which is all we really want to do for just three mana. Can't ask for more. Then we've got three copies of a Whirler Rogue, which might seem a little weird since this deck's plan is not really to attack the opponent's life total, but Whirler Rogue just presents three blockers that are pretty difficult to deal with, so we can block against the more aggressive decks, multiple creatures, and also makes two Thopter tokens, which are actually quite useful because they're artifacts for the Epiphany, and they also synergize with the card that we'll get to in just a second. And of course, Whirler Rogue can always start attacking, but that's not plan A in this deck. We also have two copies of Aligned Hedron Network, which is our answer to the large creatures that are out there, because when it enters the battlefield we can exile all creatures with power 5 or greater, and then unless the Hedron Network leaves the battlefield, those creatures will stay exiled. So of course we don't have any creatures with power 5 or greater ourselves, so it's used to get rid of the opponent's creatures. Also an artifact that stays in play, so goes nicely with the Artificer's Epiphany, and also very nicely with our final card here, which is a Thopter Spy Network, 4 mana enchantment. At the beginning of our upkeep we get a 1-1 Thopter token if we control another artifact. So if we control an Alchemist file, a Thopter token from Whirler Rogue, or an Aligned Hedron Network, we get a Thopter token, and then whenever an artifact creature we control deals combat damage to an opponent, we get to a draw card. So if we can curve a Whirler Rogue into a Thopter Spy Network and make one of those Thopter tokens connect, we can start drawing cards to again trigger the Sphinx's tutelage, which is all we want to do. Then our mana base, we've got 24 lands, 11 of those are islands, we've got 9 forests, then a 2 Lumbering Falls, which we can turn into a creature with Hexproof. We'll mostly use this to block opposing creatures, but every once in a while can go on the beatdown plan with Lumbering Falls and Elvish Visionaries as well. And then 2 copies of Hinterland Harbor. So if that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and mill some people out. Alright, let's take a look here at our opener, which doesn't have Sphinx's Tutelage, so we'll try another one. This one doesn't have it either. We do have two vials plus epiphany, which is a start, but I think we can try and go down to six, and there we go, we find a tutelage. But our hand is not great, we just have a whirler rogue and no card draw, but at least we have the tutelage, which we will hopefully play on turn three and have resolve up against a blue black. So they could definitely have a counter spell on turn three given that we're on the draw. Alright, Asper Colors, so white means our opponent also has access to enchantment removal, which is not good news. Let's play a land and pass. Disperse means we could save the tutelage from an enchantment removal spell, but uh, if we tap out for it, our opponent can just kill it, so we could wait until turn 5 to then protect the tutelage with the Disperse. So here, with our opponent leaving 3 mana up, I don't really want to play out the tutelage because it's very likely to get countered, but we did pick up Telling Time so we can just cast Telling Time end of turn, and then hopefully our opponent counters this, but that's also pretty unlikely. So let's see, 4 mana, still nothing from the opponent. Let's see if they react to the Telling Time. Nope. Alright, and we only find land, which is not great. So let's grab some islands. And, well, I guess we can bait a counterspell with Whirler Rogue, which is not something you say every day, but let's go for it. Alright, no reaction, interesting. So they might have a sweeper to clean up the Whirler Rogue. 
who knows. But still no play from the opponent, so... Let's see if we see a Languish or a Miasma here, or if our opponent is just gonna take some damage first before doing anything. Alright, they play a Flashback Marauder, so I think I want to sacrifice... Let's see, the artifacts are more valuable given our enchantments, but still feel like sacrificing a Thopter is gonna be better here. Alright, they also have a clutch to clean up the other Thopter, but we're still left with a 2-2 creature, and now we can play Tutelage and keep up Disperse to try and save it. So we are having a lot of lands here, so that is pretty bad, but we can start activating the Tutelage at some point to draw and discard to get rid of some of those lands. So, alright, let's hope our opponents can't answer the tutelage here. However unlikely that may be. Have an Oblivion Sower, alright. That's not gonna kill the tutelage. But it is giving our opponent two lands, including our Lumbering Falls, that's unlucky. We could disperse the Oblivion Sower here, but I feel like that's not really necessary. So let's mill our opponent for a bunch and get some more information here. Alright, so they do have counter spells in the deck. And Jace is a pretty nice draw here. So let's play Jace. And pass the turn. And we could chump the Sower with the Whirler Rogue, but their opponent showed us a flashback. Alright, they have a Languish instead. So we could save our Whirler Rogue here with Disperse, or the Jace with the Disperse, which I think I want to do here. Uh, question is, which one is more valuable? Jace is certainly the better card, but I think in this situation, if we're going to get hit for 5 every turn, I'm going to want the Whirler Rogue for the blockers, and I don't think we have time to replay the Jace and start activating it. And a Pilgrim's Eye. So we'll take one here, go down to 19, and then we have to decide if we want to maybe activate the tutelage or start playing the rogue. So only got, get hit for one here, luckily. And let's see what we draw. Alright, a counterspell. So we can play the rogue and leave up a counterspell to protect the tutelage which is great. Let's see some more cards. All right, there's a Solemn Offering, which is an answer to the tutelage. So let's pass. And here, I don't think I block the Oblivion Sower quite yet, although our opponent does have cards like Languish, so maybe we do have to cash in this Whirler Rogue as soon as possible. We also have the Scatter, which we could always use on the Sweeper but I would prefer to keep it to protect the tutelage. Coastal Discovery. So your opponent wants to... Alright, just for two, that's fine. And Solemn Offering is not going to resolve. Alright, so your opponent did find a second Solemn Offering. And now Clutch of Currents on a token, that's fine. So we could trade here, but I think I want to give ourselves one more turn here to draw the Spy Network. Instead we draw land. Alright, interesting. Let's go ahead and activate the tutelage here in our main phase in case we draw a 2-drop we want to play. Well, that's a fog. It's not the worst card. But uh, don't need to use it quite yet. So I think I'm okay with trading here. And perhaps we'll jump with a rogue. But uh, I want to keep the fog in hand for as long as possible to get the most value out of it. Our opponent 
got ulamog milled, which is relevant, since that can answer the tutelage. Opponent is going to activate a Lumbering Falls, so we could double block to trade with it. And our opponent decides to play Suppression Bonds on the Rogue, even though they could have played it on the tutelage to prevent us from activating it. So 8, 9, well I guess this is a pretty good time to use a Fog. Since we did have the one green mana up, we might not have the mana available next turn. And 9 damage is a lot. Alright, let's mill some more. Activate the tutelage. Well, that's more lands, that's not good. Play land, pause a turn. Yeah, we definitely drew a fair amount of lands here in this game. Which was the risk of the opening hand, which didn't have any real card draw. So here, probably just gonna chump the Oblivion Sower with our Thopter token. Does mean that if we draw a Spy Network, it's not gonna do anything. But taking 5 seems pretty bad. So let's jump, take 4, go to 9. Opponent plays a Vile. So we can activate the Lumbering Falls to block here next turn. Opponent can't prevent us from blocking since the Lumbering Falls has Hexproof. Alright, a Vile is a start. So let's see, 6, 8, possibly 9 mana. So I don't hate playing the Vial first before activating the Tutelage. See what we draw. A land. So let's go ahead and play a land, activate the Tutelage. See if we can maybe draw into a Fog. Alright, Rogue is not bad. So we can use the Vial on the Oblivion Sower on this coming turn, then play World of Rogue, find some more blockers and hopefully that buys us some more time. Opponent has two cards left in hand, down to 21 cards in Library. So he's going to attack us, but before he gets a chance to, let's prevent this from attacking. And take 4, go down to 5. Opponent does have a second Suppression Bonds to use on the Tutelage. So we can't activate it anymore. But I guess we can play the Rogue and still activate the Lumbering Falls here. I'm not gonna play out our lands since if we draw into an Artificer's Epiphany we wanna probably discard this land. And we have enough mana to activate the Lumbering Falls. So we don't have enough power to take down this Oblivion Sower. So we probably just wanna chump it with either a Thopter token or a Rogue. We can however trade the Lumbering Falls if our opponent allows it. Languish, uh, that's pretty bad for us. So our opponent can now activate Lumbering Falls. So here we have the option of trading our Lumbering Falls or just preventing one damage. I think trading is fine. Opponent can't use a vial here. And, well, hopefully we draw into some card draw that then draws us into some more action. Alright, there we go. There's the epiphany. 
Let's keep up a green mana in case we draw a fog. Well, there's a fog. Another opponent some more. Play another tutelage. We're getting close here. Play a tutelage, keep up a blue mana just in case. And pass. I would use a fog on the opponent's upkeep if our opponent had an upkeep, but in duels that gets skipped, so we don't have the opportunity to play the fog in upkeep. Opponent is gonna play Coastal Discovery, so in response I'm gonna play the fog in case our opponent draws into a counter spell. We don't wanna have the fog countered. So opponent gets a 4 4 land. Drew a land plus an unknown card, so they have one unknown, we have two tutelages. So our draw step plus an activation of the tutelage should be enough to mill out our opponent. Alright, there goes Gideon. Activate Sphinx's tutelage. Keep blue mana up just in case. Discard Forest, target our opponent, and there we go. That was super close. Wow. Opponent had a ton of enchantment removal, it looks like. So we won't win here, but as soon as our opponent goes to draw a card and has no cards left in library, we will have won the game. Sweet. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which does not have a tutelage, so let's mulligan. And no tutelage, and no real card draw besides the vial. So I think we can go down to six. Alright, no tutelage, but at least this hand has a plan. We have a Whirler Rogue and we have Spy Network. So hopefully we can combine those two to draw enough cards to find a tutelage. Could also end up just killing our opponent with damage, however unlikely that may be. So opponent on turn one Jadi offshoot, so looking like a ramp deck, which does not bode well because that means our lands might get destroyed here. Acid Moss still going to be in the game for a couple weeks and then we will have to replace it with explosive vegetation which I think is a welcome change since getting your lands destroyed is not very fun. Alright so we drew lands which is good so even if one of our lands gets destroyed here we still have a backup one. We are up against a green black so black means our opponent could have sweepers which is bad when we are trying to assemble Thopter tokens with Spy Network. But hopefully we can avoid that. So 3 mana, Gate Creeper Vine, so... So far so good. Opponent hasn't played any actual ramp spells. And... Hasn't disrupted us too much here. Alright. I think we just jam this Whirler Rogue and hope our opponent doesn't have a sweeper, so next turn we can play the Spy Network, attack with the Thopter and draw a card right away. And even if they do have the Acid Moss to kill a land, we still have a backup one. So 4 mana. There's the Acid Moss, killing the Lumbering Falls. Opponent up to 5 lands. Alright. So let's go ahead and play the Spy Network. And attack with our 2 Thopters. No need to keep any of them on defense. Not gonna waste our opponent's time by attacking with the Whirler Rogue. Opponents could have enchantment removal, however. Reclamation Sage 
is a commonly played card. So the Hedron network here is not bad. We've got the Hedron network and the Spy network. And there we see the Reclamation Sage, which we were afraid of. So we don't get to have any fun with our Spy network. But at least we got a Reclamation Sage out of our opponent's hand. So if we find a Tutelage, that's more likely to stay around. Let's cast a main phase telling time here to hopefully find some action and tutelage certainly qualifies. So here we have an interesting decision. We could just run out the tutelage, but if our opponent then has a second enchantment removal spell like a reclamation sage or tutelage dies, but we could wait a turn to then protect it with the counter spell that we put on top of our library. But that does imply that our opponent can't have any land destruction because then we won't have enough lands to play Tutelage plus the counterspell. And most decks only run one or two copies of Reclamation Sage. So I think I'm willing to take the risk here and play the Tutelage in our main phase. Now, do we attack? I think attacking is fine with the Thopter tokens. And then we can play the Tutelage. So we are playing pretty risky here, but hopefully the reward is there for us. Alright, Sandikar's Royal. So our opponent is gonna start making a lot of 2 2 elemental creature tokens. Reclamation Sage attacks, and I actually think I'm willing to take it just because most green decks play Green Warden of Murasa and if we trade the Reclamation Sage goes to the graveyard, our opponent plays the Green Warden, gets the Reclamation Sage back and then has a way to kill the Tutelage. Then again we will draw into our counter spell next turn, so maybe that's fine. Alright, sure. Let's trade and next turn we can play our land and then keep up counterspell plus tutelage activation. So let's see some more cards here. Alright. That's some asset mosses gone. And here I think I'll just pass and plan to trade our Thopter tokens. Since we do have another artifact in hand should we draw our second spy network Alright, another Zendikar's Royal. Yeah, I think I'm okay with countering that one. Could also Awaken, which I actually think is fine in the face of all those 2-2 two -two tokens. And let's Awaken a Forest. will be tapped at this turn, but next turn we will be able to block a 2-2. Two -two. So, hopefully we don't get punished and our opponent has another way to deal with the tutelage. But we also need to worry about staying alive. And here I'm still gonna trade if our opponent has a trick, that's fine. Since we're not guaranteed to have our 3-3 next turn, our opponent could kill it since our opponent is playing black. Alright, draw into a land. So this is fine, we can pass, activate the Tutelage to block the 2-2. Two -two. And if our opponent plays a large creature, we have the Hedron Network. Another offshoot is fine, since we're not attacking the opponent's life total. So all these offshoots are pretty much dead draws from the opponent. And end of turn, let's activate the Tutelage. And I think we can get rid of the Tightening Coils. Mill the opponents. Alright. Alright, perfect. So we can play the Vial. I think we'll tap double green for that. Draw a card. Four 
Fog is also a nice addition. So here we can pass, keep up the Epiphany, since I'm not going to attack here. That's a Languish from the opponent, which is actually fine. We lose one creature, they lose a bunch. Um, so yeah, no reason to play Epiphany in response. Since, well, I guess we could have tapped the land to use the mana, but I don't think we will draw into any instance that we need to play here. So let's play the Epiphany. Mill the opponent, so they're out of cards. And they're... Alright, there's another Reclamation Sage, which is nice. Another Tutelage. So, looking pretty good here, but of course, our opponent is an Ulamog away from then uh, taking over. So, still think we played the other tutelage here. We could play it safe and just start activating the first one, just in case our opponent top decks an Ulamog to exile the two tutelages. I actually think it might be fine to not play the other tutelage here. Um, as soon as we draw into some more uh, card draw spells, we could play the second tutelage and play those card draw spells in the same turn to get a big burst of mill. But, uh, alright, another land. We can just sit back on this tutelage and activate it. No need to do anything here. We could also disperse, I guess, the token. But taking two seems fine. Guess we could have also just played the other tutelage and then saved it with Disperse if our opponent top decks Ulamog. So yeah, maybe I just play out the tutelage here on the following turn. Visionary seems fine. All these cards seem pretty good. I don't know, maybe we do get rid of the Disperse. And then we can play Tutelage plus Elvish Visionary. Counterspell is great. So let's see. Yeah, let's just run out of Visionary. This will mill our opponent for at least four. So your opponent does have From Beyond, so they definitely could have Ulamog in their deck. So, hmm. We didn't leave up Scatter, we discarded the Disperse, which may have been a mistake. So I guess we just have to hope they don't draw Ulamog this turn. Because that will exile our two tutelages. Alright, looks like no Ulamog. Just gonna chump here, take two, save the fog for later. And then on our turn, Epiphany should be enough to win the game. Alright, there's the Ulamog. So yeah, maybe should have played that a little bit differently to be less open to Ulamog. But... Uh, this should seal the deal. Alright, sweet. Pass, and there we go. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's take a look here at the hand without tutelage. And this one do have a telling time, but still not in love with this hand. All right, there we go, we have a tutelage. We're on the play, we are gonna need to draw a land, or even two lands, but uh, can't really complain about having an opening hand with a tutelage in it. So hopefully this does not backfire. 
So up against Foundry of the Consuls. Right, land is great. So hopefully this draws us into a second land, or a third land rather. Alright, Jace is not a bad alternative. So definitely have a pretty powerful hand going here. As long as we draw the lands to cast our spells. So it looks to be an artifact deck with the Foundry. Since I doubt our opponent is on a mono red deck with no play on turn 1 or turn 2. Does mean our Jace is pretty likely to die. So I think I'll just play out the tutelage here. And then maybe if we have a fourth land we can play Jace plus use the Spurs to protect the Jace. A rat does not have an enchantment removal, but if our opponent has a second caller, they might still be able to get rid of the tutelage. Usually a rat's way to beat tutelage is to kill the opponent before tutelage matters. Still no play from the opponent, so that bodes well for us. Could play Jace, but it's so likely to die. Yeah, as you can see our opponent is red black. A black also doesn't have a way to remove the tutelage. Um, so probably has a lot of removal in hand. So I think I'll just play the land and play this epiphany on the opponent's end of turn. And then play Jace once we have Disperse up as well. So fourth land for the opponent, no play. Probably has a lot of removal spells in hand. Which, again, is good for us. Alright, two Chandra's Ignitions gone. So your opponent may be on the Act of Treason, plus sacrifice your creatures with Nantuko Husk plan. And of course we don't have any creatures, or barely any creatures. So, not the matchup our opponent wanted to face. So, I'm even wondering if we should try and play this Jace at all. Probably still do. Let's see, we have 5 mana. Alright, let's play the Jace, keep up Disperse. And if our opponent can kill the Jace, so be it. So Fiery Impulse, let's Disperse, let's see if they have another removal spell here. So far so good. So, Jace lives to fight another day. Fifth land for the opponent. And Priest of the Blood Rite. Alright, interesting. So that is going to present a pretty quick clock. But we can just bounce the Demon Token with Displacement Wave for zero, since it is a token which has converted mana cost of zero. So that's actually going to work out fine. The priest is going to drain our opponent for a bunch. So I think this turn we just displacement wave for zero. Could also play alchemist's vial and then displacement wave for two. So we pick up our own vials, which might actually be better. So we will take a hit from the demon, but then we will get some more value the coming turn. Um, so do we want to cast a telling time here? Do we want to play the chase? Yeah, I think we start by playing the vial, see what we draw. Mill the opponents. Alright, epiphany. So I think we just use the Epiphany end of turn again. And then next turn play Displacement Wave. This opponent loses 2 life. It's gonna hit us for 7 here. But then hopefully Displacement Wave can uh, buy us enough time. Ideal scenario here, our opponent plays another bunch of small creatures that get bounced by Displacement Wave. So opponent is going to attack for 7. 
We could use a fog, but I think we can keep it for later. So go down to 13. And see if her opponent has anything else. Read the bones is fine. Her opponent is going to draw two cards. So that means even less cards we have to mill. And end of turn, cast Epiphany. Mill the opponent for a bunch. Would not mind drawing into more lands here. Since we are a little bit bottlenecked. Interesting, the Spurs is not a bad one. So we have a few options. We can Telling Time to look for land. So that we can then play land and Displacement Wave for two. Otherwise we can only play the Displacement Wave this turn. So it is a bit risky if we don't find a land, but we do have Disperse just in case. Alright, a land is good. Uh, do we want the Epiphany or another land? think I want the Epiphany here. Since we're likely to draw into more lands. And now we can Displacement Wave for two. Bounce our own vials. Yeah, maybe I should have kept the land on top after all, since we are gonna play these two vials. So got rid of the token. Opponent gets drained for two. And we should have enough time here. Alright, another priest. So we can disperse the other demon token here. The two twos do do some damage to us. But they also do damage to our opponent. So if we can fog a bunch of times, we might even be able to kill our opponent through the priest triggers. So we go down to 11. Yeah, I do regret keeping the epiphany on top now. Let's play the vial. Another tutelage. So we could play the tutelage and then cast fog and then next turn we probably win. Uh, can this go wrong in any way? I don't think so. Alright, let's play tutelage and pass. Opponent gets drained for four. So it threatens to deal 9 damage here, so if they have any burn spells, they might think they can win, but of course they have to respect the possibility of a fog. Ember Maw Hellion is fine. Looming Spires. So let's let our opponent attack, and then cast Fog. So we take no combat damage this turn. We untap, mill the opponent for at least 4, play the Vile, mill our opponent for another bunch. And that should be game. So didn't even need to play the Jace after all but we at least tried to play him, so can't fault us for that. And I guess we'll play the Jace. And pass. If this Epiphany was an inspiration we could win this turn to force our opponent to draw two cards. Our opponent gets drained for four on upkeep by the priests. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day!